More than half a year after the inaugural flight of its new Glenn rocket, lift off. Blue Origin announced on July 17th that the next flight of its heavy lift launch vehicle will feature a payload bound for Mars. A social media post announced that NASA's twin escapade satellites would be the primary payload on this NG2 mission. Also, a technology demonstration from Viasat will be hitching a ride on board the massive rocket. This will be an exciting mission for New Glenn and Mars exploration, Blue Origin CEO Dave Limp said in a post on X. Escapade is not only New Glenn's first interplanetary mission, it's also the first multi-spacecraft orbital science mission to study the Martian magnetosphere. These satellites were meant to fly as the payload on the first New Glenn launch, but were pulled by NASA when the launch slipped out of the October 2024 timeframe. Escapade, or Escape and Plasma Acceleration and Dynamics Explorers, are a pair of spacecraft developed in collaboration between the Space Sciences Laboratory at the University of California, Berkeley, NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, and Rocket Lab. As Lent mentioned, they will fly to Mars to learn more about how the Red Planet began losing its water system and atmosphere as a result of changes to its magnetosphere. The satellites were built by Rocket Lab and its Long Beach facilities in Southern California. The company was selected in June 2021 by NASA under its Small Innovative Missions for Planetary Exploration Program, Simplex for short. Spaceflight now was able to visit them while they were still in assembly. We had three and a half years to make two satellites to go to Mars. Typical timeline for a Martian mission is a decade. Big missions like, say, MSR, I mean, MSR started in 2002, so it's been already over two decades. That's the normal pace for an interplanetary mission. We had three and a half years for everything. And as a result of that, uh, it was pretty difficult to get all of the components in hand before we were starting building. They got it done and shipped the satellites the first time, which arrived in Florida in mid-August 2024. But just before the fueling campaign began, it became clear that Blue Origin wouldn't be ready for a launch in the October timeframe. So, NASA announced that it was pulling the escapade mission and punting to a launch date in spring. The twin satellites also headed back to California for safe storage during the delay. During the 2024 Global Aerospace Summit in September, Bloomberg's Lauren Grush spoke with Lars Hoffman about the delay and the planned spring timeline. Hoffman was vice president of national security sales at Blue Origin at the time, but he has since departed in April, according to his LinkedIn page. The escapade science team has been looking at this closely, and we're working them, with them very closely to refine the launch window. But when you've got a vehicle, a New Glenn vehicle with this kind of performance, it opens up a little bit more flexibility in terms of how we can uh, support a launch like that. So it was a collective decision, and I think a smart decision to uh, give the, the whole team a little bit more time for the launch uh, coming up this next spring. However, a spring launch didn't materialize. Oh, New Glenn. On March 31st, Blue Origin announced the submission of its Mission 1 mishap investigation to the Federal Aviation Administration. It said one of the three BE-4 engines, designed to reignite on the booster, failed to do so properly, causing an unsuccessful booster landing on the drone ship named Jacqueline. Blue Origin said it identified seven corrective actions, mainly focused on propellant management and controlling engine bleed. Then on April 10th, the rocket's second stage was moved out of the company's factory on Merritt Island and out to the test stand at Launch Complex 36 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. A 15-second hot fire test was then performed on April 24th. Limp said the two BE-3U engines were able to increase the maximum thrust from 173,000 pounds of force to 175,000 per engine. More than a month went by before the next update came on June 9th, where Limp stated that the launch was pushing back again, this time to no earlier than August 15th. A spokesperson with Blue Origin confirmed to Spaceflight Now on July 17th that this was still the current target launch date. However, Ars Technica reported in late June that this is not a feasible timeline and that a mid to late September or perhaps an October or November timeline was more realistic. In an odd to Star Wars, the name of Blue Origin's second booster will be called Never Tell Me the Odds. On July 11th, Limp shared photos of the seven BE-4 engines that will be used on Mission 2 as seen in their Rocket Park engine shop in Florida. There's quite a bit of work though left before a launch date of August 15th if that holds. Presumably, teams need to perform a static fire test of the fully integrated rocket as it did during the first launch campaign. That would come before the payload is integrated onto the rocket. As of July 17th, on the payload side, the two escapade satellites, nicknamed Blue and Gold, 
are going through final checkouts in Long Beach, California, before heading back to the AstroTech facility in Titusville, Florida. Once there, they still have a notable amount of work ahead of them before they're ready for launch day. We have 21 days worth of processing. Um, there's, so upon arrival, we do another complete performance test to make sure everything is okay. Once that is done, uh, there are RBS removed the four flight items that we have to go through to make sure that you know the covers on the, the red stuff doesn't fly. They're there to protect uh, that instrument. There's a few other places in there. We have enable uh, or disable uh, plugs that have to be put in, taken out, uh, depending on when we want to enable batteries or prevent, uh, you know, improve range safety by allowing humans not to be there. And then the next step is the um, fueling. So. There are four nitrogen tanks on the bottom that you can vaguely see. Those are our attitude control system uh, tanks. Those have to be filled with nitrogen. There are two pressuring tanks at the top with helium, and then there's the actual fueling itself. And once all of that is done, we're ready. There's also Viasat's rideshare to prepare for launch, a new addition since the last launch campaign. The telecommunications company selected Loft Orbital back in May 2024 to help build its real-time space relay technology demonstration. This is part of a $53 million award from NASA under its Communications Services Project. CSP is designed to help NASA and its partners transition away from the aging Tracking and Data Relay Satellite System, or TDRIS for short, which is used to communicate with a host of payloads in space. Viasat said back in May 2024 that the mission was designed to launch in fall of the following year. The company announced in May 2025 that it selected Blue Origin to launch its first demo mission. We're excited to be working with Blue Origin as our launch partner to showcase our innovative launch telemetry services, said Susan Miller, the president of Viasat government. As NASA looks ahead to replacing the TDRS system, commercial capabilities need to deliver greater performance, flexibility, and resilience to support future missions. New Glenn Mission 2 is an important step forward for Blue Origin as it aims to establish a launch cadence with its heavy lift rocket and prepare for other key customer missions like Amazon's Project Kuiper, the Blue Moon Lunar Landers for the Artemis program, and future national security payloads for the Department of Defense. Reporting for Spaceflight Now, I'm O. Robinson Smith.